All right, guys, welcome back to HFC Games. And today I'm taking a look at the PS Vita, but now specifically the PlayStation Vita TV. Ah, yes, the Vita, the ill-fated console that Sony pretty much kicked to the curb. Thinking back on it now, this handheld was so feature packed and it was an incredibly powerful device, in particular at a time when Nintendo pretty much dominated the handheld market. And unfortunately, that domination still exists and led to the Vita's downfall ultimately. Anyway, on to the video itself. So today I'm taking a look at the setup and configuration and I'm then gonna take a look at some of the games. So guys, first and foremost, what we'll do is I go through everything I've got here and I'll kind of go through the setup of how I'm connecting it to the capture card, the Vita TV specifically, because that's what I'm using to capture footage and some of the other devices, games, etc. Okay, so first and foremost, the Vita TV itself. Now, this was refurbished, so I picked this up for 80 euros. Interestingly enough, this charger here, it's a 5 volt AC connection and this will actually work with a PSP just just a point to note so that's to give power to the device itself if i look at the side of the vita tv itself i'll see to show you the connection point so that's where the 5 volt connection goes in we've got ethernet we've got hdmi we've got usb and we've got the vita card slot so i had an 8 gig one from my ps vita and i'm using that now with the vita tv usb cable when i'm capturing my footage i'm also playing the games with the ps3 controller so and then the games i have uncharted golden abyss and i believe it doesn't actually work on the ps tv some of these games bear in mind had motion specific and touchscreen specific actions especially with the back keypads or the back sensors here as well which you obviously won't get with the PSTV. Killzone Mercenary this game is epic is a sole reason why I want to, to buy this. Bear in mind when I purchase these things I purchase these to keep these so that I can play them and then turn around in a few years and play them again. My intention isn't to buy 50 PS Vita games just to have a big mad collection or whatever. I just intend on buying the best games and having them. So Killzone Mercenary being one. Resistance Burning Sky I'm a big Resistance fan so I, I got that one anyway and Dragon's Crown, a really, really cool kind of side scroll and beat em up RPG-esque. We'll go into that in a moment when we capture some footage. Okay, let's talk about the setup and then we get into the games. So guys, just to show you how I'm connecting this and capturing footage. So HDMI going into the PS TV, um, all the way over to my capture card. Now bear in mind, um, I have to use a 4K splitter. At, well, it's a two-way HDMI splitter. And the reason being is Sony, especially with the PS3 and the PS TV, they use HD Copy Protect, which is really, really annoying. So you have to essentially split the signal. So, so basically, I have the feed going into the splitter, and then the feed coming back out through into the capture card, and then essentially I'm getting the footage through the HD60S. And then I'm recording using OBS Studio. So let's go through the menu first and a couple of neat features actually with the PSTV. So I suppose primarily it's the use of the actual controller. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be wired alone. You can also use it via Bluetooth as you would wirelessly. And not just the PS3 controller, the PS4 controller as well. So just as a test and just to show you guys, um, we'll go to devices and we'll go to Bluetooth devices and you can register as a wireless controller for the PS3 system. And essentially, if I unplug this now, it in theory will work. And there you go. So it's synchronized uh, with the cable and then it's recognized as a wireless device. So not only plug it in with the cable itself, but you can use it wirelessly as you would with the PS3, which is great. So uh, next thing to have a look at is the sound and display. And I had set mine, so it was originally to automatic. I'll just go back to automatic for a minute. But you can force certain resolutions. I'll leave it at automatic. The game that you play anywhere will drive the resolutions or so ultimately they'll be hard coded. And that's it. The menus are pretty much the same. So bear in mind, you're obviously not using the touchscreen itself. So. The center button, the PS button, actually works as the home button itself. And then you can again navigate with the D-pad or the analog. And all the apps and various apps that were on the PS Vita are available here as well. And interestingly enough, I had Hotline Miami 2 installed on my card from my Vita and Super Meat Boy. So they're going to be 
great games to catch up on actually quite possibly really good raid streams that i will sh should think of in the future a bit of a strange one but this is good to know if you open an app normally you use the touch screen to close it on the top right hand corner and you kind of scroll across it took me ages to figure this out but actually to close the actual apps you select them and then you hold down the circle button and it closes them so if you're using the controller holding down the circle button closes them but anyway let's get on to the games next and we start with dragon's crown so i've always been a fan of the beat em up genre and when i researched this game it was a combination essentially of the beat em up genre side scrolling itself and an rpg mixed in and i really really like that premise um, and what i gotta say is this game is addictive as hell and absolutely stunning art design in it it's probably one of the most gorgeous games on the vita um, it looks like it's hand drawn, but essentially uh, you level up, you can skill up, you earn money for quests, um, you can add players to your party. There's six different characters that you can actually pick. Um, so absolutely massive replay value here as well. Um, and, and I got to say some of the animation work here, the sound, the audio, the music is all really stunning. Uh, this actually came out originally on the PlayStation 3 as well. And I think it was ported also to the PlayStation 4. Um, I think it's called Dragon's Crown Pro or something like that. But anyway, this was the original release. Um, I think it actually came out in Japan first and then it was specific version created uh, for European and US markets. But anyway, uh, really, really great game. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm not a massive RPG fan. I, I, I you know, I've liked my Final Fantasies and whatever else. But uh, this one really, really appeals to me because it gives me that feel of, you know, that beat em up genre that I really, really like. And at the same time, blends it perfectly with that RPG type game as well. And next up, guys, is Killzone Mercenary. And I nearly go to say this is probably the primary reason I wanted the PlayStation TV. And I tell you what, Killzone, I'm a massive Killzone fan anyway. I've always loved the first three games. Well, maybe Killzone 1 was uh, okay. I liked 2 and I absolutely adore 3. But you will be hard pressed to find that this is actually recorded on the Vita through the TV. Uh, th there's so much power behind the bonnet of the PlayStation Vita. I found some of this footage absolutely stunning to show that this is actually a handheld game. Um, this really, really pushed the boat in regards to utilizing the maximum power out of the PlayStation Vita and presenting an absolutely stunning looking game. And also, it built on the Killzone formula. The, the Killzone formula for me, what I like about it the most is the meaty gunplay. The, all the gunplay feels heavy, weighty, um, and all the guns feel powerful. But what they've kind of done here in Mercenary, um, they've added an addictive quality to it. Uh, something similar to like you'd see in a Call of Duty system, um, where you kind of level up, you, you scavenge, you find money, and then you can buy stuff in a shop, essentially, and you can upgrade uh, your character levels up um, and everything else. So. Um, and it's pick up and play, um, it keeps regular checkpoints so you can pretty much play, drop it, come back to it. But yeah, a combination of the winning formula I find, especially from Killzone 3, uh, of the combat in that. And then combine it with a, a kind of an addictive system that keeps you coming back for more, increases the replay value. As I mentioned already, there's kind of a shop as well which you save money and you can upgrade your character, get better armor, better weapons. Um, and there's like little mini objectives hidden within the levels. In this case here, I can save a hostage um, and get some extra cash. You can see in the top left hand of your screen, your balance is increasing as you're playing through the missions and you're earning rewards. So you're constantly being rewarded. Um, so a, a great kind of a combination, a, a different type of kill zone game um, and actually steadily probably coming my personal favorite in, in the franchise. Um, I didn't think something could beat out Killzone 3, but this is really, really getting there. Um, but anyway, guys, that's a look at the PlayStation TV and two of the, my favorite games on the system. Uh, if you like what you see, please make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.